Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you joining us from around the world today. This webinar is entitled Biodegradable Long-Acting Injectable Implants Prepared by Hot Melt Extrusion. This webinar has been made possible by Thermo Fisher Scientific, so a big thanks to them for enabling us to gather today and share science together. Our speaker today is Dr. Tan Nguyen, Product Manager at Inocor Pharmaceuticals. His presentation today will focus on injectable implants using twin screw extrusion, an exciting new technology in pharmaceutical manufacturing. At this time, I'm going to bring uh, Tan Nguyen onto the scene. Tan, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Darius, for the introduction. Um, so hello, everyone. Uh, today, I would like to share with you our experiences in the development of um, biodeg biodegradable long-acting injectable implants prepared by the hot milk institution. Uh, but first, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. So my name is Tai Nguyen, and I'm a, a program manager at Inocor Pharmaceutical, and I am responsible for uh, all the projects related to the development of um, long-acting injectable uh, that we can prepare by hot milk institution or by institute forming gel. And uh, the presentation today will focus on uh, hot milk institution as a platform technology. So uh, Inoco Pharmaceutical, in a few words, um, we are a um, drug delivery company. We are located in the north of the Netherlands. Uh, it's about uh, two hours from Amsterdam, and we are a team of about uh, 40 employees, 40 uh, colleagues, with um, more than 75% having a Master of Science or PhD degree. So we really focus on development of uh, injectable uh, sustained release drug delivery. And um, in our portfolio, we have uh, our patented polymer base uh, for the drug delivery and we develop the project um, until the GMP manufacturing and supply for the phase one, phase two uh, clinical study. Um, we work in a, a partnership with uh, different big pharma, and, big pharma and small biotech and we work and, in a license and uh, development business model. So uh, why are we working on the development of sustained release drug delivery system? Clearly, um, there's um, some significant uh, benefit for the uh, patient and also for the healthcare system as well. If you look at um, the graph um, on the um, in this slide, you can see that it's um, um, uh, there's a um, uh, plasma uh, drug plasma concentration curve um, uh, in purple that show you um, the variation of the uh, drug concentration in uh, in the blood and um, it may uh, go uh, over the um, limit to reach a toxic level or it may also go uh, under the level that you can have an, uh, the efficacy the therapeutic efficacy of the treatment. Um, that is a drawback of um, immediate release and uh, advantage of the sustained release or long acting injectable is that we can uh, bring, we can deliver a, a stable uh, drug concentration in the plasma at the, within the therapeutic range, meaning lower than the toxic level but also higher than the minimum effective level. And um, to illustrate the um, uh, the, the, the benefit of long-acting injectable, we have um, a few examples and the first one is um, if we look at um, the some application where you need to inject uh, the drug in the eye. So clearly you can see the big difference between a daily injection to the eye or if you have a long-acting injectable, you uh, only need to inject once a month or even uh, once every six months uh, as one of the products we are developing at this moment uh, in partnership with uh, Avi and uh, Alagan uh, that will bring a significant be uh, convenient benefit to the patient and uh, the, the reduce in the uh, injection um, number 
will, uh, in the number of injections will also decrease the risk of um, inflammation and uh, the risk of um, infection to the patient associated with uh, each injection. So in the second example is about um, the um, side effect uh, of the drug. Um, one um, very clear example here is uh, Exenatide as an API that was hardly known uh, as an API for the treatment of diabetes before the appearance of um, uh, bidurian and uh, a long-acting injectable uh, formulation that would help um, uh, to reduce the uh, side effect of the patient. A third example is um, uh, the compliance in uh, psychiatry. You can imagine um, what would happen if uh, a patient just forgot uh, to take their medication and became violent. And the last one, in the area of family planning, what would happen if we have incompliance? So at Inoco, uh, we uh, develop um, the long-acting injectable uh, with uh, using different uh, technology platform. We produce um, a formulation with microparticles or solid implants or drug elliptic coating or injectable gels. Um, we have our symbiosis multi-block copolymer platform and also in-gel tri-block copolymers to um, develop the uh, long-acting injectable. And for today, uh, I will focus on the solid implant uh, using symbiosis polymer and hot melt extrusion. Just a little bit over the um, business model, we normally would uh, start a project with um, a client or a partner with an API and application uh, provided by the partner and we provide, um, uh, we contribute with our drug delivery system and we go all the way from uh, R&D uh, feasibility study to um, GLP top study, GMP uh, manufacturing and supply for the phase one, two clinical study. And when it comes to the listed um, manufacturing for clinical trial and commercial manufacturing, uh, we would just hand it back to either partner or our um, selected uh, CDMO, CMO for the uh, manufacturing. So we keep our core expertise in the uh, R&D and early development to the phase one, two clinical study. Now, um, let's have a look at the uh, long acting injectable uh, solid implants. If you look at um, uh, the long acting injectable implants um, uh, available in the market, uh, we saw um, a group of um, non-biodegradable implants um, such as no plan, level plan, implanon, jadel. These are the implants uh, that are used uh, for long, um, um, long term efficacy, say three to five months, five years, and these are a uh, pretty big implant um, that contains also high amount of um, active. Uh, these are non-biodegradable. There are also other non-biodegradable implants that were used for the treatment of prostate cancer. And this implant also contain uh, a high amount of API. Um, in the same therapeutic area uh, for prostate uh, cancer treatment, um, there were quite um, famous of product uh, marketed by AstraZeneca. These are Zoladex um, that contain gosorelin that are, can be used for the treatment of less uh, prostate cancer. These are biodegradable um, implants. And um, there are in the, in the category of uh, biodegradable, we can also see uh, Oxodex, uh, which is um, developed and marketed by um, Alakan. These are the, the tiny, this is an, a tiny implant um, that will be delivered to the eye um, for treatment of uh, inflammation. And uh, recently um, we saw a new marketing approval 
of another product with a biodegradable implant that is used for the treatment of um, um, of uh, phototoxic, uh, so it is toxicity uh, due to different uh, sources of light. Here yeah, in this table, um, we have um, we provide a summaries of uh, different uh, long-acting injectable implant uh, available in the market, and uh, you can see that the the latest one um, um, was used for the treatment of erythropoietic protoporphyria, um, which was approved uh, in uh, 2019, and um, this is also a um, biodegradable implant um, that will provide two months of um, uh, treatment duration. Now, at uh, Innoco, uh, we developed the um, uh, long acting injectable solid implant using hot melt extrusion uh, as both the monolithic matrix and um, uh, the, in the form of the implant with the release controlling layer. But for a monolithic matrix, uh, we use um, different extruder, the small uh, Hacker Mini Lab extruder for um, very small scale early development uh, at about uh, five to seven gram of material. And uh, once uh, we have um, a lead formulation, we can scale up to clinical manufacturing to um, manufacturing at a clinical supply scale or even a commercial scale with uh, an 11 millimeter extruder. Uh, so the um, uh, in the top left picture, you can see um, a simplified uh, manufacturing process. Uh, in principle, we just need to uh, compound uh, the polymer or blend the polymer and the API and introduce the, the blend in uh, a hot melt extruder uh, to melt and mix the components and then uh, create um, a shape of the implant uh, by a, um, a die, a, a rock die, and then we cool down the uh, material and cut into uh, implant. Um, so, yeah, when we talk about implant, we normally think about a cylindrical rod, but we also uh, develop um, the implant in the form of um, a thin um, sheet as well. So, um, yeah, I would like to introduce or share with you our experiences in the development of um, a, a generic uh, formulation or generic product of Zoladex. But Zoladex is a uh, um, gasoline implant uh, product which are available in two strands. Um, the first um, First one contains 3.6 milligram of gosolin, and which is uh, which is um, indicated for one month treatment of uh, processed cancer, while the second strain contains uh, three times higher than uh, the amount of uh, the, the the drug, the API, uh, 10.8 milligram of gosolin, and which is used for um, three months treatment of processed cancer, and uh, the uh, the two strain. Uh, um, uh, has different um, uh, dimension. The the, uh, the implant of the two strands has different dimension and will be delivered by uh, two different injector with different needle size. The 16 G needle for the one month and 14 G needle for the three months. So. At Inuka, we um, develop the a generic uh, um, uh, product of uh, gosolin implant, which we call uh, implant rest. And um, in the lab, we um, develop the formulation, the implant formulation, and compare the um, drug release characteristic by in vitro release uh, experience, experiment. And we can see that um, you can see that here in the uh, Solid green line is the cumulative uh, release in vitro of the uh, generic formulation, the in progress, and the dotted 
green line is a release profile of the originator, uh, Zoladex 3.6 milligram for one month release. So, uh, and the, um, the two dotted uh, black curve um, are the uh, um, specification uh, indicated in the British Pharmacopoeia. So, um, if you are within this two black curve and you are within specification of the pharmacopoeia. And you can see here that um, the release profile of um, the one month sustained release formulation is really typical of, um, uh, of a PLGA polymer matrix, which is, which is non linear and biphasic. In the first week, so from day one, day zero, day zero to seven, we have um, very slow release, and once the polymer started um, to degrade, then we will have an increase in the drug release rate uh, from day seven to day twenty-one. You can see, and uh, when uh, most of the drug content from the implant have been uh, released, we will have uh, another decrease in the release rate when the uh, sources of API inside the, uh, the implant are depleted. Um, um, running low. So um, next to the in vitro characterization, we also characterize or compare the um, uh, originator with our generic implant uh, in vivo in red model. And uh, we characterize in both pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic, uh, which is the eff efficacy of the API. So in the um, left uh, y axis, you can see the um, uh, scale of the serum uh, cos gosolaline concentration in nanogram per milliliter. So it is um, uh, expressed in the uh, red curve. Um, so in vivo, the release profile of the generic uh, implant and the originator implant are almost um, the same. So they are very similar. And uh, that's so that um, um, the um, generic implant has met the uh, requirement for um, the in vitro character uh, for, for the um, in vivo in vivo pharmacokinetic. But on top of that, if we look at the pharmacodynamic, which is the efficacy of the API, we see um, the same behavior of the um, generic implant and the originator implant. We saw um, normally an increase in the serum testosterone at the beginning after administration of um, uh, the implant. But right after that, when we have a feedback loop, uh, testosterone um, uh, level will decrease to um, a normal uh, uh, range of concentration. As, as you can see in the um, y axis on the right side, serum testosterone in nanogram per milliliter. So um, the uh, risk, the in vivo response uh, to both uh, generic implant and originator implant are quite similar. But um, what we can also notice from the um, the pharmaco kinetic in vivo is that um, the plasma concentration of gosolin uh, from day 7 to day 21, we saw um, uh, uh, an, a significant increase in the concentration, but the response remained quite similar uh, as compared to the area when we have a lower concentration of gosolin in, uh, uh, in, the, in the serum. Um, so we uh, could also conclude that uh, here what we see is that the, between the day 7 and day 21, uh, the gosolin was released more than needed uh, to have the therapeutic effect. This is a uh, um, typical um, characteristic of uh, PLCA polymer matrix. So um, again, when we um, 
put together the um, drug release from the in vitro characterization which is expressed in the uh, as a grip curve um, and with using the um, graph on the right side the, the y axis on the right side um, and uh, the in vivo is as a red curve we can see that the, the increase in the serum costurine is um, associated with the degraded, uh, degradation phase of the polymer and uh, which is um, the real um, reason behind that increase in the uh, drug concentration in the um, uh, in plasma now next to the development of um, uh, one month formulation we also develop um, a generic uh, version of uh, Zoladex implant, so it, we call it implant rest three months. So in vitro characterization also um, show um, similarity in the release profile of the uh, generic formulation as compared to the originator, and uh, both release profile were within the um, specification as defined in the British Pharmacopoeia. And again, uh, due to the um, um, use of PLGA in the polymer matrix, we can see uh, a typical uh, degradation control release uh, profile. As um, we can see from day 0 to about day um, 35, 38, uh, we have a very um, a slow release. And uh, once the polymer starts to degrade, uh, so we have um, degradation control release characteristic with an increase in the um, release rate from the 38 to about the uh, 30 and that would typically typically result in um, a spike in the uh, plasma concentration of the drug which is probably not necessary and um, when we look at um, on the long acting um, uh, LSRS and, uh, agonists that are available in the market, um, we saw a different version of the long acting injectable, which has a different duration from one month, three months to uh, four, six, and twelve months. But um, only uh, in the case of Zoladex implant we um, can only see uh, one month and three months um, uh, implant we just cannot see we do not uh, cannot find four six or twelve month formulation and we were thinking um, a lot about the reason behind um, that why can't we just have a, a longer acting uh, implant to even reduce the um, administration frequency for the patient um, the main reason probably was that um, if we need to increase the release duration then we will need to increase the uh, amount of uh, API so the amount of, uh, of drug so um, here uh, yeah, with a linear calculation if we want to go to four months or six months we will need um, 14 milligram we need to deliver 14.6 milligram or 21.6 milligram of gosolin respectively and with that amount of um, active we need to have a bigger implant so if we look at the one month implant it's smaller implant with um, 1.2 millimeter in diameter and 10 millimeter in length and when we uh, increase the duration to three months, we need to use a, a bigger implant with 1.5 millimeter uh, in diameter and 15 millimeter in, in length. Now, uh, for the four months and six months, we just calculated uh, the, uh, the the dimension, and we can see that it will be much. Uh, we will need a much bigger diameter than 1.5 millimeter. So in Imagine that a um, 1.5 millimeter diameter implant to be injected in the body. Um, uh, you will need to deliver the implant under anesthesia, and um, that is the downside of a larger implant administration. Um, however, um, we do see that um, there are uh, opportunity to deliver. Um, a longer um, sustained release 
of uh, gosling without having to increase the um, uh, dimension of the uh, implant and which is uh, still affordable for the patient so here um, we um, just identify some uh, disadvantages of the uh, PLGA copolymer for long acting injectable uh, formulation development is that um, it's, it's, it's the irregular biphasic release kinetic of the uh, polymer which is um, um, the main drawback of the uh, that platform um, and we have already seen earlier that um, uh, there was an, uh, a spike in the uh, plasma drop concentration which is not really necessary um, to maintain the uh, pharmacodynamics so the efficacy of the drug um, the second uh, disadvantage of PLGA copolymer is that um, it will normally lead to um, uh, a, a decrease in the EC2 um, PS um, which could be uh, destructive for some uh, certain API especially uh, when we talk about the peptide or protein or uh, antibody and um, there are also other uh, disadvantages related to adsorption of the uh, peptide or protein on the hydrophobic surface of PLGA or acylation um, of the uh, API with the carboxylic acid end group of the PLGA. Um, so um, all this um, all, um, indicate that there is a need for alternative biodegradable polymer to develop the long-acting injectable implant with more constant uh, drug release and that can also address the drawback of the current uh, PLGA in the formulation uh, of in long-acting injectable implant development. So um, at uh, Inocor, uh, we uh, develop and we have our uh, intellectual property on um, another uh, type of uh, biodegradable polymer which we call it uh, the synbiosis polymer it is a hydrophilic um, biodegradable poly uh, ether ester urethane polymers which um, compose of the well-known monomers uh, like the poly like uh, epsilon caprolactone or uh, dialsanone or uh, lactite or glycoli these are all well-known uh, monomer and um, we synthesize the uh, um, uh, multi-block copolymer by first uh, synthesizing uh, a, um, a short um, block that we call pre-polymer and then uh, the different uh, pre-polymer would be um, chain extended to combine uh, together uh, to form a multi-block copolymer with the unique uh, molecular uh, architecture that we can uh, fine-tune to address the need of um, drug delivery so either it is a small molecule or it is um, a, a peptide or protein um, we can customize um, the polymer st uh, structure and um, uh, characteristic to meet with the requirement to deliver the, the API um, so um, as I mentioned earlier the monomer are well known uh, that, con that could be either glycoli, lactide, uh, caprolactone, dioxanone and we also use um, known uh, um, um, compound for S initiator like polyethylene glycone, uh, butandiol and uh, tin uh, octanoate as catalyst and uh, butan uh, diisocyanate as a chain extender the all these component of the multi uh, uh, the, the, the synbiosis uh, block copolymer are well known and uh, these components are um, cl clinically proven as a safe polymer and chemi chemicals with um, uh, an excellent track record in the regulatory approval and in the uh, marketed biomedical devices
Now, when we talk about the disadvantages of um, the PLA, PLGA um, polymer platform, and uh, here we are talking about uh, symbiosis polymer uh, and the advantages that um, it can address the current challenges in uh, um, the drug delivery, uh, long-acting injectable development. So the uh, symbiosis polymer is a multi-block copolymer with uh, phase separated morphology. So uh, there are two different phases, a hydrophilic amorphous domain, so phase uh, of the polymer that are um, uh, alternating the hydrophobic crystalline domain or phases of the uh, polymer. And this combination would make an unique uh, structure of the symbiosis polymer that can be used for the development of long-acting injectable. Um, so the hydrophilic amorphous domain would actually uh, absorb, absorb the water and swell to form a um, hydrogel-like structure that allow um, the drug or the API to diffuse through the matrix. So that will be a diffusion control uh, mechanism. And we can also control for the amount of, um, uh, of water absorption or the swallowability of the polymer based on the uh, designing specific design of the polymer structure. And um, the other phase of the polymer, which is crystalline domain, that would maintain the um, um, the, the um, it's a cross link uh, domain that provide the structure integrity for the polymer or for the uh, dosage form. Um, uh, the polymer will ultimately uh, degrade uh, through hydrolysis. And uh, one unique characteristic of the polymer is that there's no um, accumulation of the uh, acidic degradation product in situ because um, the polymer can swell and um, the degradation product can diffuse through the um, hydrophilic um, amorphous domain. And that is really an, um, uh, an, an unique distinction between symbiosis polymer as compared to the um, conventional uh, PLA, PLGA polymer. Um, here in this slide, um, we'd like to show that the symbiosis polymer are, are well biocompatible and uh, that has all the safe degradation products that have been extensively tested and evaluated um, in vitro and in vivo in different uh, animal model. And we also have an extensive ISO um, one. 0993 biocompatibility and toxicity data package that we can share uh, with our partner uh, during the development of a um, long acting injectable. Um, again, on the um, uh, possibility to customize the uh, the structure of, um, of, of uh, symbiosis polymer to address the need for long acting, uh, um, for, for sustained release delivery, we can control uh, the polymer in terms of uh, swelling degree or degradation rate. And um, that would deliver different uh, release rate and uh, release profile. As you can see on the graph, uh, there are four different polymer with different structure here. And we use um, the ratio between the hydrophilic block and high, uh, hydrophobic uh, crystalline block as 10, 90, uh, 20, 80, uh, 30, 70, and 50, 50. And you can see in the release graph of an, um, uh, a model API, which is a, a, a protein, a bovine, bovine serum albumin, we can see that the release profile can be uh, fine-tuned or fine can be um, tailored uh, by using different block ratio uh, um, leading to different release rate and uh, release duration. So um, uh, in a bit more detail, 
how to fine tune the polymer we can play with the uh, uh, molecular weight of the polyethylene glycone or the, the content uh, in percentage of polyethylene glycone and the type of the monomer weight fraction of, plum, uh, of uh, monomer and the block ratio and the molecular weight of the uh, multi-block uh, copolymer as well so there are different knobs that we can uh, turn uh, to fine tune the um, uh, release characteristic. Coming back to um, the example about um, gosselin implant that I mentioned earlier, when we um, uh, put together the um, pharmacokinetic uh, in vivo as a serum gosselin and the um, uh, of, uh, the in vitro release uh, uh, characteristic in the green curve. So is, these are the in vitro data. So we can see that the the increase in uh, serum gosselin concentration correspond um, really correspond to the degradation of the PLGA uh, polymer matrix between the day seven and day twenty one, and that degradation would cause an unnecessary uh, uh, increase in the gosselin concentration in plasma which still can keep um, the efficacy of the drug, but this is probably not necessary. So there are possibility to reduce the, the dose by using different uh, release mechanism. And um, based on that observation, we um, started with uh, the development of a four month uh, sustained release gosselin implant. And, um, we use our um, symbiosis uh, polymer based formulation and you can see here on uh, in the graph on the left side uh, the in vitro release characterization um, of the one month in the green curve uh, the three months formulation in the blue curve and the four months our inner core formulation uh, as a uh, red curve then you can see that the release of the api is more uh, regular as compared to the uh, uh, PLGA matrix. And um, using the same dose, we, if we calculate the uh, daily drug release uh, from the implant using the same dose of 10.8 milligram of uh, API, we can see that uh, for the one month and the three month formulation, we will always have a spike in the uh, daily release of um, gosselin. But um, for the uh, symbiosis based formulation, we see a regular, uh, quite constant daily release uh, of um, gosselin for four months, which means that uh, we could uh, still uh, develop a longer release uh, product using the same amount of API, so without the need to increase the size of the implant which we would we, uh, keep the same convenience level for the patient. Um, so um, uh, in the previous example I showed you uh, was the um, uh, development of um, gosselin implant using a um, um, monolithic structure. Um, but in some cases, we also need to uh, develop um, um dual layer or um a, a two layer product uh, for um um uh, providing an addition release controlling uh, mechanism to the uh, long acting injectable implant and um at inoco we uh, develop the dual layer implant um either by using um co extrusion process which is um, also well known for the manufacturing of um, um, uh, of Nuvarin or uh, the Implano. But um, for some application, when we uh, have the incompatibility between the, the polymer and in the core and uh, the polymer in the membranes, either because of the degradation temperature, temperature um, of the API or the polymer, then we can have used an, another process to pro, uh, to produce a dual layer structure uh, in a, in a process what we call a wire coating process and um, here in the uh, video you can see an example where we develop um, 
um, uh, the outer layer that contain an API and that release uh, the drug uh, within uh, one to three weeks, up to a month. So you can see here is an uh, um, 11 millimeter uh, hot melt extruder that we couple with a wire coating die. And uh, on the other, on the one end of the die, uh, we ha have the core material coming in. Uh, so here is the material of the coating layer going into the extruder and that will go to a hot melt extrusion process. This is a conveyor belt. Also, we have um, um, inline laser um, uh, control, uh, SPAT control for the uh, diameter of the implant and also the, the coating layer. Um, here you can see the wire coming in one side and we'll meet the extruder with um, the, the coating material uh, in the middle. And on the other side, we have a coated um, uh, tubing that uh, we can monitor for the uh, diameter using a laser and then that will go out um, as a cylindrical um, uh, uh, tubing uh, with a coated layer and we can cut in the dimension that we want. So um, about the polymer, uh, here we also uh, demonstrate that we can use um, three different polymer grid with different uh, amount content of the polyethylene glycol which will provide different swelling degree and there um, uh, in the release characteristic you can see the in vitro release profile of the API we can have um, uh, an almost immediate release uh, complete release within a day or we can go to about five days to up to um, um, two weeks to three weeks sustained release of the API uh, based on uh, different structure of the polymer. Now the, another area um, where we can use um, symbiosis polymer and we are oh, actively working on it is the development of um, a long acting uh, reversible contraceptive and um, there are different uh, methods for contraceptive uh, using uh, around the world. Um, but long acting, uh, long acting um, uh, reversible contraceptive is uh, up to now by far the, the most effective birth control uh, method. Um, there are products available in the market um, which was made of biodurable, uh, which means non-biodegradable polymer. But this, uh, these are highly effective, but this um, implant always will require surgical removal of the implant after the treatment period. So um, uh, we look again here uh, at some uh, product available in the market as a no plan or implant known or JDL. Uh, these are all very big uh, implant, uh, non-biodegradable. We would need to um, insert the implant in the patient under anesthesia and also would require um, the surgical removal of the implant after the treatment duration as well. And um, at uh, Inoco, we are developing um, um, the um, contraceptive implant that will require uh, no uh, surgical removal. Uh, so that means that we need to use a biodegradable implant. And uh, at, uh, optimally, there will be no need for local anesthesia by reducing the diameter of the implant or ultimately uh, we will also we are also working on projects to develop a contraceptive in the form of micro needle which will be uh, virtually painless uh, by administration so um the objective of that uh, on this product is to produce um, the, the um, uh, contraceptive implant with smaller diameter. And um, important characteristic of the implant is that the um, uh, API or the hormone uh, in the plasma 
must be very constant to keep the uh, efficacy within six months. And um, after releasing all the payload of the drug and um, the um, plasma concentration of the drug should drop rapidly uh, so that uh, the patient or woman can return to fertility if there's no need to further use a, a contraceptive implant. And uh, the implant should be uh, bioresorbable resorbable, uh, to prevent the surgical removal. So um, we developed the um, uh, Synbasis multi-block copolymer-based uh, implant um, for um, contraceptive for uh, uh, the case of gosulin, which is um, 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 a peptide. Uh, but the platform is actually um, available and suitable for uh, different API, uh, uh, which are sensitive to temperature or which are sensitive, sensitive to the decrease in the local pH. And um, in this case, um, we would also want to demonstrate that we can produce um, the uh, implant uh, using a very low extrusion temperature and low male viscosity. And um, if we consider uh, the PLGA as um, a, a reference, the melting temperature um, uh, the temperature that we typically need to use to produce a PLCA based implant would range about uh, 80 to 130, 150 degrees Celsius. And this would already be the degradation temperature of many IPIs like uh, protein. So when we um, use a symbiosis multi block copolymer, we can run homeo extrusion as a temperature as low as 50 to uh, 60 degrees. That would um, help us to protect the uh, uh, heat sensitive API. And uh, here is an example of um, uh, the stability of uh, a protein, uh, alkaline phosphatase, by heat exposure in the oven at 55 degrees in the uh, graph on the left side. You see that uh, the protein remains uh, stable after uh, about two hours, 120 minutes. But when we increase the temperature to uh, 95 degree or 130 degree, which is a typical uh, extrusion temperature of PLGA, then we will see um, a, a rapid decrease in the activity of the protein. Um, using hot melt extrusion process and uh, synthesis polymer, we run the hot melt extrusion at uh, 50 degree, 55 degree and 85 degree. And we can see that at 55 degree uh, using symbiosis polymer, we can produce um, the implant of a protein and we can uh, maintain the activity uh, of the protein um, at about 80%, much higher, significantly higher than uh, when we run the homeo extrusion at uh, 85 or 130 degree Celsius. Now, next to um, the um, integrity, um, again, here we also demonstrated that uh, using um, different uh, polymer structure, we can control release um, the, um, um, uh, the, the release characteristic of the um, um, protein. In this case, that is an, uh, that is an uh, bovine serum albumin as, an, um, as a model API. Um, and with different API, uh, with different molecular weight on the uh, left side, then you can see that um, uh, in one polymer, using one polymer, the release uh, characteristic vary with the uh, uh, molecular weight of the API itself. So with each pol um, API, we will need to address by using uh, different polymer, by designing uh, the polymer structure to be um, suitable for the requirement. So in summary, uh, for some uh, key feature of the synthesis uh, based implant technology, that it is um, an excellent um, uh, control uh, over, it has excellent control over release kinetic, uh, kinetic of the API, 
which is a, a red grab uh, release button and we can tailor uh, uh, design the um, uh, polymer to meet the release duration and it is compatible the the symbiosis polymer is compatible with the uh, thermal label um, API such as protein or peptide or even some uh, uh, heat sensitive uh, small molecule and the swallowability of the polymer um, it's a very um, it's a, a real distinction for symbiosis polymer in development of a sustained release delivery for the pH sensitive API uh, such as uh, protein or uh, peptide Um, so I hope that um, I can share with you uh, our experiences in development of the uh, long-acting injectable implant and the um, current formulation uh, platform using uh, PLGA and the um, uh, advantage uh, of the Symbiosis Polymer platform that we can use for uh, the case of Coserolin itself but also we can use for different um, uh, peptide uh, protein and other small molecules that are uh, sensitive to um, uh, the, the temperature and that are also temp sensitive to um, the acidic pH especially the local um, uh, acidic pH in system containing uh, PLGA and uh, if you have questions please feel free to ask or uh, later on uh, reach out to me um, and if there's any potential idea, um, we are very open for discussion. And I would like to thank you a lot for your attention. Thank you very much, Tan. Hello again, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and found it relevant and engaging. Thank you again, Tan, for the insightful talk you just delivered. We have a number of follow-up questions here for you. And for the audience, just a reminder, if you have a question that you'd like to ask, you can submit it using the Ask a Question panel beside the media player. So, Tan, the first question I have for you here, what other manufacturing techniques can be used with syn biosis polymer besides hot melt extrusion? That's a very good question. Thanks, Darius. Um, now, uh, as I presented today uh, in this presentation, uh, I focus on the hot melt extrusion. But next to hot melt extrusion, we also use um, uh, we also manufacture uh, microparticle to um, deliver uh, a sustained release uh, uh, API. And so um, we manufacture by a solvent-based uh, process, and we also um, uh, uh, manufacture or use um, symbiosis in a uh, coating application where um, in, in one of the, uh, the product that uh, is now has been uh, in the market for a few years uh, we call it uh, a stand for delivery and API uh, and uh, um, we are also now working on a solvent based uh, process to uh, produce um, uh, symbiosis based uh, institute forming gel as well. Great, thank you. Another question for you. When working with heat sensitive API, to what extent can you decrease hot melt extrusion processing temperature? So, up to now, um, the lowest temperature that we have used to produce um, uh, implant. It's about uh, 50 to 60 degree, and that corresponds to uh, the selection of uh, um, the monomer that we will use in the structure of multi-block copolymer. And in this case, um, uh, we design in our uh, uh, polymer uh, a large amount of um, carbolactone, polycarbolactone, and that, therefore that would allow us to decrease the uh, extrusion temperature. And um, one thing that I would like to mention is that um, next to the low extrusion temperature, we um, the symbiosis polymer uh, also when melted uh, has um, um, a low melt viscosity. 
that will also contribute to the uh, stabilization of the heat sensitive uh, API. Great. Another question, do you also sell this polymer off the shelf? That actually I have to apologize. We, uh, that's not our business model. Uh, we do not uh, um, sell the polymer off the shelf. Um, the reason behind that is that we have um, a different design of the, the polymer and um, that will require uh, understanding of the uh, structure of the polymer to interpret data. And once we, if we just sell the polymer off the shelf, um, it is quite easy uh, to lead the user to make um, um, incorrect conclusion about the, um, uh, the drug delivery system. So we normally work with um, our partner or client or partner um, in a very small project that we call uh, feasibility project, where we will uh, help the client in a selection of the polymer and also uh, manufacturing a prototype and test it uh, in the lab. Um, and later on uh, in the, the first preliminary uh, animal model to show the proof of concept and uh, that is how uh, we are working at Inuko uh, using the symbiosis polymer. Great. And uh, we have time for just one more question here. And how or what is the regu regulatory status of your symbiosis polymer? So the symbiosis polymer um, um, is uh, used or it is um, produced um, using um, the very well-known uh, monomer and all these monomers have um, uh, excellent uh, safety uh, and regulatory status. And um, uh, the um, next to the, the, the um, um, uh, regulatory status of the monomer, we also have uh, one of the, uh, our uh, symbiosis polymer that has been used in a product that is uh, now in the market for a few years. And this is an, also an, a good example of um, um, the, the safety and regulatory, regulatory status of the polymer. So recently we have um, a project with a client going to uh, a clinical stage and we have been in uh, discussion with um, the uh, FDA together with our client about the um, uh, regulatory approach um, for the phase one clinical study. And uh, we've been aligned with the FDA that we don't need to produce, uh, to produce um, uh, biocompatibility data of the polymer only, but we all, as a standard process, we only need to perform uh, a top study for the combination of polymer and the API uh, that it won't have to do it anyway with any kind of product. But for the uh, uh, polymer itself, um, it has been considered as uh, safe. Great. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Tan, for those great answers and, of course, for your presentation today.